Welcome to this next video where, well, initially I didn't actually want to go through with this particular SMS. Uh, for the past week or two, I've been upgrading the login security on my server. And initially I wanted to use SMSs, but then uh, I switched to the OTP app. You guys may have seen the video I made on two-factor authentication. But uh, I thought, well, let me pull through with a video anyway, even though I'm not using SMS for two-factor authentication. Uh, it might come in handy to somebody that wants to use this. So I'm just sharing what I did. I didn't test this with a whole bunch of service providers. Um, so, you know, this is my experience. For what it's worth, maybe you can learn something from it. All right, so, well, first up, if uh, if you want to go and have a look at two-factor authentication, but two-factor authentication, you go to system settings and you set it up there. I've got it on OTP. You would simply put it, s s make that setting SMS. All right, that's easy enough. Did I not change that now? Is it still correct? Uh, all right, so first things, let's go to SMS settings. There's all the settings which I filled in. All right. Now you'll see that I'm using the service provider SMS2. There's a whole bunch of these things. Um, there's no particular reason I chose this guy, these guys. In the end, their support turned out quite um, good, and, and you, you'll find that that's quite important. Because from what I've been reading up, you know, many service providers have got different parameters here where it says message parameter and receiver parameter. Um, and of course, these static parameters, they vary from service provider to service provider. You know, don't even copy these or you can try and copy this. But more than likely, whoever you choose as a service provider is going to be different. I can almost guarantee you that. So this is simply just a, an example. Uh, what you want to look for is, um, in this case, if you log on to your service provider's uh, control panel, they should have documentation, you know, a document that stipulates all the commands. I'm just scrolling up a little bit here. I'm not going to go through all of them. You know, in this case, I looked for SMS messaging and then send a single message. And there it shows you the command that it actually requires. All right. Uh, and here's the detail. That's a required per parameter. And these are optional parameters, etc. Obviously, you've got authentication as well. So you'll see that even from here, it looks a little bit different than what's eventually on my control panel. That's because I worked with their technical department and we tried a couple of things, etc., etc. Um, just a heads up. Sometimes it uses the get command and sometimes the post. If you use the post, you need to tick that. All right. Now, one thing, for instance, that you need to look out for is the field here, if I remember correctly, can take 140 characters. So if you put the API key in this um, block here, um, you limit it. So in the case of my service provider, you could have a high security key, which gives you, uh, dear me, how many um, characters? It's a, it's a lot. It didn't fit in here anyway. So um, when you copy the paste this in, you don't always check to see if the whole key is in and it failed the whole time. And then on the service provider, when you generate the key, you had a less secure uh, 32 character option. OK, so keep that in mind. I don't know if you put the or, uh, API key in here, what your limit is here. So keep that in mind. Now, one way you can check this is if you do send an SMS and you send a test SMS by going to your SMS center. 
All right, so there you type in your number and your message and you say send SMS. If it does not work, it'll give you an error message, um, you know, with a URL in there somewhere. Percent message and then the message percent to the whole um, URL that ERPNX constructed. And you can snapshot that and actually compare it to your service provider, what it requires. What you can also do is log on to the back end and there in the frappy.log file, it should log that same URL that it's trying to send. And you can pick it up there and you can, can compare it to your service provider's requirements to see if ERP Next takes these parameters, uh, settings, takes these parameters and makes up the call statement correctly. Right, so that's a nice tool to use. But I do suggest that you speak closely to your service provider's technical department. Um, in my case, they, uh, they were very helpful to sort this out. And eventually we did sort it out. Also, another thing to look out for is um, I'm in South Africa and this company is not in South Africa. So they are coming in to the South African networks from abroad. And it looks like the South African uh, cellular networks, um, each service provider has got their own funnies, if I can call it that. For instance, my test messages failed um, to one service provider, but it went through to another service provider. Now, they're still trying to sort that out. But my interface between ERP Next and their system is working because you can go and look in the logs and see that the message was actually delivered. So keep that in mind as well. If you're outside your country, that might also affect um, how the system operates. Okay. Well, I think that's about that that I want to share. Hopefully it's enough to uh, whoever wants to use SMSs to get you started.